bright learners. <laughs> okay, it's time today to do chapters five, six, and seven of How to Eat Fried Worms. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Chapter five, The Gathering Storm. Alan and Joe stepped, uh, stopped in the orchard by the pile of fresh dirt. You think he'll be able to do it? said Alan, biting his thumbnail. I don't know, said Joe. He can't do it, said Alan. F how could anybody eat 15 worms? My father will kill me. Fifty dollars? He ate that one awful easy. Forget it, said Joe. If he doesn't give up himself, I'll figure something out. We could spike the next worm with pepper. He'd eat one piece and then another, talking to Tom. Then all of a sudden he'd sneeze. Then he'd sneeze again. Then again. A faint look of panic would creep over his face. He'll begin to wonder if he'll ever stop. He clutches his stomach. His eyes begin to water. Billy's awful stubborn, said Alan. Even if it was killing him, he might not give up. <laughs> cried Joe. He falls to the floor. I bend over him. Gosh, I say, call his mother. It's the troglodysocrosis. His eyes bleed up at me. <laughs> Remember that business last summer, said Alan, gnawing on his thumbnail, when it was 95 degrees in the shade and I dared him to put on all his winter clothes and his father's raccoon coat and his ski boots and walk up and down Main Street all afternoon. <laughs> they went off through the orchard, Joe sneezing, sighing, rolling his eyes, pretending to be Billy suffering from a dose of peppered worm. Alan moaned to himself about how stubborn Billy could be. <laughs> Fifty dollars? Chapter 6, The Second Worm. <sighs> Billy sighed. On the plate before him, they the last bite of worm under a daub of ketchup and mustard. We still need our worm. Let's go back. Oof. Okay, let's put some ketchup and mustard on it. Just because it's so nasty, I don't even want to look at it. I like mustard better, so I'm going to go for that. Oof. And then ketchup. <sighs> What's the matter? asked Tom. I don't know, sighed Billy. He picked up the fork again. Wait, where's my fork? <coughs> Does it taste bad? No, said Billy wearily. I just taste ketchup and mustard mostly, but it sort of makes me feel sick, even before I eat it, just thinking about it. He sighed again and then glanced at Joe and Alan, talking to each other in whispers over by the window. What are you whispering about? Nothing. Then what are you whispering for? Nothing. It's not important. Just something Joe's father told him last night. What? Come on, finish up. It was nothing. We'll miss the cartoons. Billy shut his eyes <clears throat> and popped the last piece of worm into his mouth. Chewed. <coughs> oh, gagged. Clapped his hands over his mouth. Gulped. Gulped. Toppled backwards off the orange crate. Sprawling on his back in the chaff, he gazed peacefully up at the ceiling. Joe and Alan stood over him. Open up. Billy opened his mouth. Let's do the mouth because I like it. Wider. See any Joe? Nah, he swallowed it. Okay, let's go. Chapter 7 <laughs> Red Crash Helmets and White Jumpsuits. After the movies, Tom walked home with Billy. Tomorrow, I'll roll the crawler in cornmeal and fry it, like a trout. It's not really the taste, said Billy. It's more the thought. When I start to eat it, 
even though it's smothered in ketchup and mustard and grated cheese, I can't stop thinking. Worm, 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 worm. Gaggles of worms in bait boxes, drown worms drying up on the sidewalk, a worm squirming as the fish hook gorges, gores into him, the soggy end of a worm dragging out of a dead fish's mouth, robins yanking worms out of the lawn. I can't stop thinking worm. Yeah, but if I fry it in cornmeal, it won't look like a crawler, said Tom. I'll put parsley around it and some slices of lemon, and then you can concentrate. Think fish. All the time you're waiting in the barn, all the time you're eating it, keep saying to yourself, fish, 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 fish. Here I am eating good fish, good fish. Trout, salmon, flounder, perch, I'll ride my mini bike into church. Yes, dace, tuna, haddock, trout, wait till you hear the minister shout. Fish, 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 shark, haddock, sucker, eel, I'll race my father in his automobile. Eel, flander, bluegill, shark, we'll race till day till after dark. Billy cheered up. Think how they're all stare. I'd rev up the aisle, zip around the front pews, down a side aisle under the stained glass windows. My parents would kill me. Reverend Yardle peered down over the Bible stand. William, he'd cry. William, you take that engine thing out of here this minute. Yeah, and then he'd have to come chasing after us, said Tom. Billy laughed. <laughs> waving their arms and yelling and we'd lead them zigzag round and round and in and out among the gravestones and monuments in the cemetery and then roar off down Sandgate Road <clears throat> leaving them draped over tombs panting and shaking their fists Huff huff yelled Tom dancing around and boxing the air and that Monday we'd smuggle it into class disguised as Raymond Dwelly because he's so fat and hide it in the coat closet and then when M Millie Butler said anything, anything at all, even something like, excuse me, or even if she'd sniffed, we'd dump a whole bottle of ink over her head and run for the coat closet. Wait, I need some ink. I like blue ink. Ha, let's see. Millie can have a bunch of ink. Oh, we'd run for the coat closet, overturning chairs and desks behind us to slow up Mrs. Howard. She'd come after us, fuming and shouting threats. And suddenly, the doors of the coat closet would slam open, and we'd roar out on our minibike. In blood-red crash helmets and white jumpsuits, our scarves streaming out behind us, and we'd roar round and around the classroom while Mrs. Howard knelt among the overturned desks and chairs, <laughs> sobbing helplessly into her hands. <laughs> and then, vroom, vroom, out the back and up the hall, thumbing our noses at the monitors. Brackety, brackety, brack up the stairs, stiff-arming tackers into Mr. Simmons' office, up onto his desk, vroom, vroom, a backfire into his face. <laughs> and out the window as he topples backwards in his chair in a hurricane of quiz papers and report cards, and then crunch, landing on the driveway. We roar off down the highway to Bennington and join the Navy, so Mrs. Howard and Mr. Simmons and our parents can't punish us. <laughs> I think that sounds like a good plan. Okay, that's it. That's three chapters. Crazy. All right, I'll see you next time for chapter eight. Nine and ten. <laughs> Bye, bright learners. Have a good day.